I normally do not like to be political. This channel isn't about that, and I will never really talk politics if I can help it. But sometimes it really isn't easy. Sometimes you have to show your political leanings on subjects, mostly because they have become political talking points. For instance, in the 1920s, anti-Semitism was on the rise. Not the first time in history, nor even the first time in the 20th century. But it started with something small, some politicians, celebrities at the time, and average Joes. But one political party was all about hating Jews, the Nazis. And well, we all know what happened, and Nazis are trash. But they started out as a fringe political group, and grew into a major political power in Germany. Most of the policies under Nazi Germany were about race. Any group they considered not German were persecuted. We all know the history from there, the Holocaust, Nazis being the biggest pieces of shit in history, the whole nine yards. But there is a reason I bring them up. Persecution due to what the state deems as not normal is still happening to this day. And in Chechnya, LGBT people are the targets. And it isn't hyperbole to say that it's starting to look eerily similar to Nazi Germany. And normally, yes, this is a true crime channel. And while yes, the majority of my content is true crime, Originally, this was going to be a video about the disappearance of Zalim Bakyov, a Chechen singer who disappeared under mysterious circumstances in his home city of Grozny. But I can't do this without talking about the purges that have been done in Chechnya of LGBT peoples. They have been done in the past and they still might be going on or another will happen in the future. So, I decided I need to talk about both to give a more clearer picture of why the disappearance of a minor celebrity is important. Warning ahead of time, there are names and places in here I am going to attempt to say, but I know I am going to mess them up. So I apologize now for any mispronunciations. So I am not going to go into detail the history of an entire country because this video would just drag on and no one wants that. But Chechnya, while independent from Russia, is also pretty much a part of the Russian Federation. It is a very complicated system of government and for this video, all you need to know is the head of Chechnya, which is the actual title, has to answer to the president of Russia, which right now is Vladimir Putin. When it comes to LGBT rights, well, Russia isn't really that progressive. They are still under the don't ask, don't tell for the military. Gay parents can't adopt. Gay marriage isn't recognized. But when it comes to laws dealing with the LGBT community, Russia pretty much lets its satellite republics interpret the laws how they see fit. Which kinda is bad because Russia does not have any laws against discrimination. Hell, they once had homosexuality listed as a mental illness in Russia. But this isn't going to change anytime soon, unfortunately. Mostly because culturally, there is a negative view on LGBT people in Russia. In fact, opinion polls done have proved that more people are against gay rights in Russia than for. And that intolerance is just rising. But it is worse in Chechnya. Chechnya has a strong Islamic majority. In Chechnya, it is still against the law to have anal sex. The punishment for that was a caning. That was until 2017, when the government upped that to a corporal punishment, imprisonment, or execution. Which leads me to Ramazan Kadrelf, who is the head of the Chechen Republic. Here he is pictured with his little boy haircut and shitty beard. Why is it that all the bigoted people have really bad facial hair? By the way, the dude is on social media. But I'm not going to share his socials. The reason being is that he has a penchant for being aggressive, even for the mildest of criticisms. He has, in the past, imprisoned and punished people in his country for even the mildest things. He even got into an argument on Instagram with John Oliver. This is the leader of a country, and he decided to get on social media to get into a beef with a comedian. Oh, and it's going to get worse from there. He supports polygamy, which, while mild, is for religious reasons. Because he, as a Muslim, believes Allah wants him to have four wives, which he only has three. He looks down on those of the Muslim faith if they have only one wife. I have nothing against people who have more than one partner. My point with this is the fact that he judges you if you're a true Muslim 
by the number of wives, which, you know, understanding the Quran, praying, living a good life in the name of Allah should matter more than how much booty you are getting. But hey, what do I know? I'm not the head of a country. He also supports honor killings, which if you do not know what that is, well, an oversimplified version of it is that your family has the right to unalive you if you bring dishonor to them, which is a slight issue in Muslim communities, which I'm going to focus on in a different video. Mostly it's women who get killed by their families, but there are cases of LGBT people being targeted as well, which leads me to the most anger inducing shit this guy does. He is so homophobic. He encourages families to kill their gay relatives. Though I might get a copyright claim by HBO, I am playing the full interview he did on Real Sports in July 2017 so that you can see what I mean. <laughs> But do you not get concerned when you read these accounts of young men who say they've been tortured for days and delivered to their families in sacks? Does it concern you as a matter of law and order in the Republic when you hear these stories? So now that we know Ramzan Kadrov, an offensive man who happens to be the head of a country, now it's time to get a bit more angry because he doesn't just hate LGBT people in his country. No, he has them rounded up, detained, and tortured. Their stories match dozens of other accounts that accuse the Chechen government of launching a campaign to eradicate homosexuals. And one day, the police come. With the guns, and they put me in the back door of the car. They put you in the trunk? Yeah. And we got there, they opened the door, and they started just, from that second, they started beating me with feet. It was non-stop hitting. My body was blue, purple. And they were asking names of gay names, like they tell me that they know that I'm gay, and they put me in a wall, put bag on my head, and that guy charged his um, gun and put me right here on my head. And I started painting the wall with my blood. And he said that it's my 
last seconds. What was going through your mind in that moment? Something died. It just moved back, like so moved back, like running away. I'm sorry, I know. It's okay. <sighs> what do they mean by take away the shame? I don't know, maybe probably kill. His family spared him, but it means life in Chechnya was over. So I am going to warn you right now, this is not going to be something that is easy to sit through. Some of you might get more angry than normal, mostly because that this was and still might be happening. But I want to tell you right now that I understand the anger. No one in this world should be persecuted for whom they love, let alone the color of their skin, their religion or lack thereof, or how they were born. That said, in 2017, police in Chechnya began to round up gay men. Over a hundred were detained by police, tortured, and beaten. Three have been confirmed to be dead after killed by their families. Chechnya has a long history of violence, and thus their culture reflects that. There, men have to be rugged and tough. Anything considered soft will be violently ended or discarded. That is not me making excuses for what is going on there. I am just stating the facts that people in the highest ranks of government view Chechnya as. What the police would do was to detain, torture, and then after a bit, release them to their families. The families were ordered to do away with their shame. The Chechen police even entrapped gay men and women by luring them through dates and other ways to capture them. I'm trying to give a rough outline because if I go into details, it will even be too much for me. But all the testimonies are the same. The police will round people up, demand to know who else is gay, torture the person for information, then out them to their families. What the families did with their outed relative varied. Some just let them go. Others beat them severely, and still some killed their relative. Detained in detention centers, some had their heads shaved, given limited water and food, and humiliated. Some of the humiliations including given girls' names. Whether it is because the international outcry or the police detained as many as they could find, the first gay purge, as it's called, ended. But in 2019, they started up again. The UN was one of the first to respond to the gay purges with a call to end it. But in the US, this all happened when Trump was president. Which, I have a dislike for Trump. It's nothing political, it has nothing to do with his presidency. I disliked him before he was president, and I find him to be a massive tool. It is well known in my friend circles, but just because I don't like someone doesn't mean I disagree with everything they stand for. I did agree with his stances on opioids. I do agree with his stance on getting the vaccination. I do not like his attitude or his personality. For reference, Biden creeps me the fuck out too. Pretty sure he has shit himself at least once or twice while doing press. But the Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, pressured Putin to look into this, while UN Ambassador Nikki Haley did what she does best and just be useless. She pretty much said, and I'm summarizing, if these were true, then this is bad. Which the if this is true gets me because multiple people came forward saying this was happening. There is evidence that this was happening. And she was a part of the UN, so she knew this was happening. FYI, Nikki Haley was useless as United States UN ambassador. Congress passed a resolution condemning the purges and encouraged Putin to look into it, which pretty much is nothing because it holds no action. Just saying, hey, Putin, do something, asshole. But the Treasury Department did impose sanctions on Chechnya, which is at least an action. But Trump himself, though he had a massive bromance with Putin at the time, did nothing. In meetings with Putin, according to the National Security Council, it never came up once. Even Rex Tillerson stated that he didn't know if Trump brought it up with Putin. Pretty much to summarize from what I've researched, everyone in the US who knew about this tried to do something, either commented on it in support of the LGBT community in Chechnya that was being targeted, or tried to raise the issue, all except Trump. Call me a dirty liberal or whatever, I don't give a shit. But that is the research I found. Trump was the only one in the United States government who had access to Putin, and he did nothing.
Speaking of a whole lot of nothing, Russia was no better. Russian officials have pretty much denied that this occurred, even though the investigators they sent in were being sabotaged by Chechen authorities. Even though many different countries besides the U.S. were attempting to get Putin to look deeper, it appears he really didn't. There wasn't much effort into finding out the truth. I am just going to say this. A spokesperson for Ramzan Kadriov has said there are no gay men and women in Chechnya, which, spoiler, there are. In fact, Zalim Bakiyov was born in Grozny. Zalim was gay, or is gay. I say was or is because no one knows if he's still alive or not. Zalim was born on April 23, 1992 in Grozny, the capital of Chechnya. I'm not even going to attempt to say the name he was born with, so here it is on the Noxtron 5000. Zalim had a talent for singing and he dreamt of being a singer. In fact, though he worked a comfy job in the department of the mayor in Grozny, he was playing shows in his spare time, which he sang. When he sang, he sang in Russian or Chechen. In fact, he was so talented that he became popular in his home country. He had a couple of singles that made him popular, but I don't know how to say them in Chechen, so I'm going to actually say them in the English translated versions. The first was called Nana, then I Miss You, then Without You. In 2017, he applied for casting in a Russian reality show called Star Academy. He was supposed to start in September of that year. Zalim traveled to Grozny on August 6, 2017. He was there to attend his sister's wedding. He was just to fly in, attend the ceremony, and then go back to Moscow where he was going to take part in a music contest. But not long after he landed, authorities seized him. That same day, when people were looking for him, his cell phone was deactivated. Zalim, because he was gay, was not allowed to appear in Grozny. He was forbidden by the Chechen authorities. Zalim wasn't one to hide the fact that he was gay. And unlike other families, Zalim's seemed to accept him for what he was and was happy that he was coming in to see his sister be wed. His mother, Malika, and aunt, got a message that he left Chechnya, then he was never seen again. On the 18th, his mother attempted to get the police involved. When that didn't obviously work, she went to the Human Rights Council to pressure the Chechen Interior Ministry to help her find her son. The answer she got was that on the 11th of August, Zalim left for Moscow. Problem with that was, he didn't appear to be in Moscow at all. She tried everything, but no one would open an investigation into the disappearance of her son. Zalim seemed to have fallen off the face of the earth. That was until September 24th of 2017, when a shady video was uploaded to YouTube. I reached Germany already somewhere in the middle of August, and it's awesome. I understand the whole coolness of living in Europe. Although I've only come here recently, I live with my friend. This is one of the translated lines from the video. A man who looks like Salim is walking around the living room in an apartment. An apartment that is supposedly in Germany. He dances a little. He talks to the camera and looks like he is having a fine old time. He is inviting a man to Germany. A man who, looking through the analysis done on this video, is named Islam, who is apparently a friend from Holland. He adds he has nothing to do in Moscow or Grozny before the video ends. Now here are the reasons that it might be staged. For one, the video is addressed to a friend and only one person. So why post it on YouTube? Did he not have any other way to contact this friend? Also, why did he not contact his family? But it gets even more bizarre the more you look at it. For one, you cannot tell where he is. Curtains are drawn, and everything seems too plain. He also makes mention he moved in the middle of August. He says August, not last month. Remember, in August, he went missing. Not only that, but others with a keen eye have noticed other things. Like the can that is between the Red Bull cans is an energy drink only found in Chechnya and Russia. The furniture is Russian made. This video came out as Malika was pressuring the government to find her son. This cannot be a coincidence. I think the video was uploaded to shut her up.
So with an obviously staged video, what happened to Zalim? There are some people who believe that he was murdered. Sometime in October of 2017, Igor Kroknikov of the Russian LBT network released a statement. At the end of August, we received confirmation of our earlier presumption that Bakiyev was detained by Chechen authorities due to suspicion of homosexuality. It is believed that he was tortured and he was accidentally killed during that torture. There are some who think that he escaped Chechnya, but didn't go back to Moscow, that he did go to Germany and is living a simple life. But that one is confusing because his family accepted him. So why would he not reach out to them? He was on the cusp of stardom. He was doing what he loved. Why would he give it all up? Those are the only two theories that are out there. In my opinion, he was murdered. Then his murder was covered up by the Chechen government with help from the Russian government. His family didn't hate him. His mother wanted to know where her child was, but was stonewalled at every turn. Either the person in the video was someone pretending to be him, or it was him forced to make the video before his death. We don't know when he died. It could have been hours, days, or weeks. So I am going to quickly give reasons why it could be Zalim in the video, and then reasons it might be a double. If I had to guess, Malika was already trying to find him when the video was made, and he was forced to make it. Then sometime later, died from the torture. But the fact that he stated in the video he moved to Germany in August could suggest that it was made in August and then uploaded later. The body double theory is more straightforward. Tired of Malika looking for her son, they made a video and used a body double. That way she thinks he is alive and will stop inquiring. The problem with this is family and friends who knew him well enough could tell if it wasn't him. Can't fake some things. And from what I've read, the family and friends all think it was him, but the way that he was talking isn't normal for him, saying phrases he would never say. So I'm gonna lean towards Zalim being the one in the video. I think it is fully possible that the people who were holding him were intent on killing him and wanted something to cover their tracks. The Chechen authorities were relying heavily on families committing honor killings. Zalim's family wouldn't do that. Remember, most families were given a threat by the Chechen authorities. That threat was, either you take care of it or we will. So it is not out of the possibility that the intent to kill him was there. Not that he died by accident, but it was an intentional killing. Now that I've given my own conspiracy theory on it, I would like to point out, we don't really know what happened to Zalim. We can only speculate, but what we know is the Chechen gay purges were happening. They happened twice already, and I would bet my my firstborn that they will happen again unless some government steps in. Hating on someone because of who they are is really stupid. Whether it be sexual preference, color of skin, religious belief, or non-belief, it doesn't matter. It is stupid to hate someone for those reasons. Especially hating someone enough to kill them for that. I wish I lived in a world where shit like this didn't happen, but unfortunately it does. The only thing that we can do is to fight the hate with love. So I'm going to close this with the words of wisdom from somebody I really do admire. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Martin Luther King Jr.